Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to take a look at finding area between curves. We previously talked about finding area below a curve or under a curve and above the x-axis. So if we had a general curve f of x, and we wanted to find the area of this region from x equals a to x equals b, we can do so by finding the definite integral of f of x dx from a to b. Now what we're actually doing when we find that area is we're finding the sum of all these tiny, tiny rectangles inscribed under that curve from a to b. So they're minuscule, I've, I've drawn it here, but it's, they're just slivers. And the area of each rectangle will be the height or the length, which would be the y value or f of x. And the width of the rectangle will be change in x, or another way we can express that is dx, because they're almost the same thing. So if we took the area of this one rectangle, it would be f of x dx. And if we summed all those slivers from a to b, we can use integration to sum all of those. And that's why we use the elongated s as the symbol for integration, because we are, it's a summation process. So what I want you to understand here is that the length of the rectangle is f of x, and the width is dx. We multiply those together to get the area of one of those rectangles, and then we sum all of those multitude of rectangles from A to B to get the total area. We're going to use that idea. It's going to be fundamental for what we're going to do with area under the curves and volumes and centroids and so on. So I, I hope that you can understand that concept because what I want to do now is apply that concept to area between curves. So let's take a look. When you're asked to find area between curves, we're always going to name the top curve f of x. And we're going to always name the bottom curve g of x. To find the area between those curves from x equals a to x equals b, we're going to find that representative rectangle and describe the length of that rectangle and the width. So to describe this length here, it will actually be this y value, or f of x, minus this y value, g of x. So this value here will be this, f of x, minus this, g of x, to get f of x minus g of x. The width is dx. So the area of that representative rectangle will be f of x minus g of x, and the width will be dx. And then to find the whole area of all of those rectangles, we sum those from a to b with integration. So understanding now that the length of our rectangle will be the top curve, minus the bottom curve, and the width will be dx. So here's our length, here's our width. I think this will make more sense if we actually do examples of finding areas, so let's do that next. Our first example asks us to find the area of the region bounded by the curve y equals x squared and the straight line y equals 2 minus x. Your first step is to draw both curves because you need to know which curve is the top curve and which curve is the bottom curve. We're also going to have to find points of intersection. So let's draw this, these two curves. So y equals x squared we know is a parabola. Looks like this. And y equals 2 minus x. Remember when you have an equation for a straight line, this b value tells you the y-intercept, or whether where the line crosses the y-axis, and this value tells you the slope. So if we were to write this in this form, 
we can see that the y-intercept is 2, so that's where it crosses the y-axis, and the slope is negative 1. So our, our line is going to be sloping down if we have a negative slope. So we've drawn our two functions. This is the region we want to find the area of. So my next step would be, I need to know what A is and I, I need to know what B is. So I need to find those points of intersection. So we've talked about that in the last video. We actually did this example. We let the two curves equal each other. So x squared will equal two minus x. And we solve this equation. It's a quadratic equation. I'll move everything over to one side and make it equal to zero. We factored, so x plus 2 and x minus 1 were the factors. You could also use your quadratic formula. My two points of intersection are when x plus 2 is equal to 0, so x equals negative 2, and when x minus 1 equals 0, or x equals 1. So we're going to be integrating from negative 2 to 1. Let's set up our integral. So the area of this region will be the integral from negative 2 to 1 of our top curve. So the, when you think about our representative rectangle here, it's going to be defined by this y value minus this y value. So it's going to be negative x plus 2 minus x squared dx. So this length will be this y value minus this y value. The width is dx. Now when you're doing these integrals, you always look to see if you can simplify, because often you will be able to combine like terms and so on. We can't simplify here, we don't have any like terms, so we're just gonna go ahead and integrate. So our area will be, we integrate each term, so negative 1 half x squared plus 2x, minus one third x cubed, and then we evaluate it. So we put a one in, we'll get negative one half plus two minus one third minus, now we put a negative two in our function. So negative two squared is positive four, negative one half times positive four will be negative two, 2 times negative 2 will be negative 4. Negative 2 cubed will be negative 8. Negative 8 times 1 third will be negative 8, one, negative 8 thirds. And then times by another negative gives us positive 8 thirds. Let's find this value. We're going to have our lowest common denominator here is 6. So we're going to have negative 3 6 plus 12 6 minus 2 6 minus, let's maybe combine our like terms here first, and then we can change to fractions with a common denominator in our next step. Here I'm going to have 12 minus 3 minus 2 would be 7 6, minus a negative 6 would be plus 6, minus 8 thirds. Again, our lowest common denominator is 6, so it'll be 7 6 plus 36, 6, minus 16, 6, which would be 27, 6, which can reduce to 9 halves. So we would say the area of this region would be 9 halves, or 4.5 square units. Let's try another example. Our next example says find the area of the region bounded by y equals x to the fourth and y equals 16. So again, let's draw the two curves. y equals x to the fourth is this shape. y equals 16 is a horizontal line. So this is the region that we want to find. We need to find our a value and our b value, our points of intersection. So we start there. 
So we make the two functions equal to each other when x to the fourth is equal to 16. So we take this fourth root of 16 and it will be positive and negative 2. Now we set up our integral. So our area will be the integral from negative 2 to 2 of our top curve. So again, we think about our representative rectangle here. What's the length of this rectangle? It will be this y value minus this y value. So notice the top curve is 16 minus this curve or this y value, which is the bottom curve, x to the fourth. So that's the length of the rectangle. The width, as always, is dx. Now, there is a bit of a shortcut we can take in this particular example. If you notice that y equals x to the fourth, is a parabola that has symmetry about the y-axis, then you'll see that this area is going to be the same as this area. This only works if you have symmetry for the two regions. So I could take a bit of a shortcut on this example and instead of doing this integral, I'm going to write it the area as two times this area. I'm going to stay in the quadrant one, so from zero to two. You can do it either way. It's always easier if one of your limits is a zero. If you notice that symmetry, go ahead and take that shortcut. All right, now we integrate. So it's going to be 16x minus one fifth x to the fifth. And now we evaluate. When we put a 2 in, 16 times 2 would be 32, minus 2 to the 5th is 32, times 1 fifth will be 32 over 5, minus when we put the 0 in this polynomial, it's just going to be a 0. So this will be our area. Again, we need a common denominator. So 32 times 5 will be 160 over 5 minus 32 over 5. 160 minus 32 is 128 over 5. So my answer will be 256 over 5 square units. You could write that as a decimal as well. I usually leave the minus fractions. I recommend that you practice finding areas on, between curves. Um, going through the process that we went through here. Sometimes it's going to be necessary to work with horizontal rectangles instead of vertical. So we're going to address that in the next video. But make sure you've had some practice doing this type first. All right, take care and we'll see you next time.